Hello everyone, welcome to my live stream. It's another weird week where I was not able to stream on Monday, so I'm doing Monday stream today on Tuesday. So that means it's time for Inktober 52. That's the weekly ink drawing, uh, and then there's a prompt. You don't have to use the prompt. I like to use the prompt because it makes it easier to focus on the ink drawing because if you're spending too much time thinking about what to draw, then uh, that's time taken away from practicing your ink drawing skills. So I am using the same kit I've been using all year. Most of it was obtained last year at the Inktober Retreat in Malone, New York. We received this uh, Zebra brand creative starter set. So it has the five colors of mild liner double ended markers and then five colors of their um, fine liner pens. Uh, it also included this Inktober branded moleskin sketchbook. So this has been really, I'm already like a third, well a fourth at least of the way, wouldn't you say? Okay, a fifth at least. <laughs> well, it's still pretty exciting seeing how far I've gotten in, um, in this sketchbook already. I mean already, we're almost halfway through the year, but it doesn't feel like it should be that fast. <laughs> Um, and then the other things that were from the retreat that we got at the retreat are these two, uh, these are also zebra. Yes, they're also zebra. They are two, um, black ink brush pens. They both have the same end on this side, but the red one also has a small, so this is a medium, and then there's a small, a fine, uh, brush tip on this side of the red one. And then the stuff that I added myself. Uh, my favorite Blackwing pencil that I've ever gotten. And a sharpener for it. So I sketch with a pencil first and then ink it in. And then this little bag is completely unrelated. I just thought it would be a cute use of this adorable little bag I got from Amido in the box. Last year, I think. Or the year before. I can't remember how long they've been going. They're a stationary box, so sometimes I get art supplies, but sometimes it's more like writing or office supplies or something. So like one time we got this set of cute reusable, they call them gift bags, but I just like to use them for stuff like, oh, I need this certain kit of items or whatever, so. <laughs> uh, the prompt this week is kind of hard for me. It's skate, which of course the first thing that comes to mind is roller skating or ice skating. But I am doing a, an additional challenge of making every prompt Griffin related so that I'm practicing my Griff, Griffin drawing because once I finish my first novel manuscript, I'm going to illustrate it with black and white ink drawings. So I want it to be all Griffins as I do this Inktober challenge so that I'm getting practice for that at the same time. So there's like multiple reasons to this. Increase my ink drawing skills, increase my griffin drawing skills, and just flex my creativity muscles by doing a, the prompt as well. Plus it's kind of nice to do something different from what I usually do, so it's a, like a mental break. Oh, Exy is here. Hello, Exy! How are you? You have a good start to your week? Did you have a great Monday? I'm actually having a pretty good Monday. Uh, I keep saying it's gonna have a small chance of rain, but I haven't seen any rain yet. I'm looking out my window right now. Oh, and I'm gonna take a drink of my nice, huge, 32-ounce bottle of water just now. Ah. <sighs> okay. Set that down. So yeah, this prompt is challenging. I don't want to do a griffin on roller skates. <laughs> that is the first thing that came to mind. I'm like, mm, that's too Tex Avery for me. I'm not really, you know, it's too Looney Tunes. That's not really what I want to do. I want to do something more fantastic. So I started thinking, I was like, maybe, I felt like there was an animal called a skate and I'm like, ah, oh, let it be a bird. But no, there's a, a skate. Uh, it looks kind of like a stingray. It's a fish 
But when I was thinking, I was like, how can I make that griffin related other than the griffin is like looking at it or something. It didn't, it wasn't very interesting to me. So then I went to my favorite place, thesaurus.com or whatever it is. Um, and I found a definition for skate that can mean gliding along effortlessly. So I'm like, ah, now that's perfect for a griffin. So I'm going to draw a griffin just gliding along. And I think maybe to help get the skate idea across more, I'll do like kind of that Harry Potter hippogriff scene from the movie where, uh, from the third movie, right, where he's on Buckbeak and then the, the Buckbeak is just like, and it's got its little, not little, huge <laughs> talent just skating across the water. I do something similar. Maybe not the exact same thing, but I'll have like a little bit of water so that it's like the griffin is gliding across some sort of an ocean or a lake or something like that. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. And let's see, I don't have any references picked out yet. So get my phone and gonna just um, gliding bird of prey. Oh, but I better pick a bird of prey because if I just put bird of prey, I get a lot of like military helicopters and airplanes and that's not what I'm looking for. Did you have a good Monday, Xy? I mean, if you didn't, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> you could just, I won't ask again. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'll put gliding bird. What the heck? It doesn't have to be a raptor. It can be any kind of bird. Aw, oh, man. That's a, it's an album by somebody. No. <laughs> uh, well, maybe if I, okay, I'm going to look in the images. Hmm. Ooh, that might be nice. What the heck is this? Is this an albatross? This is like a giant. These look at these wings are huge. I think it's just a seagull. That is those wings are massive. How does that fit? What kind of bird is this? Ooh, click on it. How birds fly by sciencelearn.org. What kind of bird is that? Crazy huge wings. I mean, they're not huge. They're long. So long. Albatross. I thought so. Oh, it's just a really giant. So, like, I know all about albatross from that one poem that everybody reads. Well, not everybody, but it feels like everybody reads it in junior high school. <laughs> oh, what is it called? Because they, like, albatross is supposed to be a good omen, but then they shoot it, and then the guy who shoots it they curse him by put the dead albatross around his neck or whatever. But then it's weird because he's the only one who survives the ship, I think. And then so maybe it was still a good omen because he... I can't remember. <laughs> Let's do an albatross. I love this. These wings are huge. Okay, now I'm going to look for gliding albatross. I know what tross means, because alba probably means white. Albatross. Oh, so beautiful. They are, they are really are like just really gigantic seagulls. Look at them. Just huge. Huge. Wow. Okay. Oh, I love this. But it doesn't look like gliding. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is a good one. From World Atlas. I use this one. I love the angle. Ah, I've got to try to get the camera to focus on the screen, but I can't do my phone up good for you because the light reflects on it. But <laughs> I love this angle, sort of coming at, and that it also turned this way. Yeah, I'll start with this one. I don't know what the back half will be. Hmm. A seabird the back half will be. But anyway, I'll just start with this one. Yeah. Okay. I've got it zoomed in. Oh, actually, another question. Uh, are you hearing any static today? I guess you would have told me if you had heard 
uh, hurt any, but I moved my phone charging stand over here and I moved my microphone to the other side of my camera. So hopefully there's enough space between them now that I can still use my phone for look up reference images, but also not affecting the, the microphone. If there's any, any trouble, please, please let me know. Like you always do anyway. <laughs> okay, so this bird, the wings are just, I wonder how it folds up the wings because the body is so short. Do the wings, oh, I gotta look this up later. It's like, do the wings just hang way out past the body because it's just so long? Ah, I am enchanted. I am enchanted by this albatross. I guess I've never really, never really looked for one before. Looked at what, what does it look like? We read about it in this poem in school, but what is it? Never thought to look. And now, uh, it makes sense though, because every time I look up any bird, I'm like, yes, this bird is awesome. <laughs> I don't know if I've just always loved birds or no, I think that I have grown in my love for birds. I do not think I always love birds so much. But these days it's like any bird, like, oh look at that bird. <laughs> okay, doing the really rough, rough sketch to start. Holding my pencil like this so that it doesn't get too fine and that I don't make any too dark lines to start with. Just wanna keep it really light and loose. Ah, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha, yeah. Trying to avoid well-being questions. <laughs> the election process got longer and nastier. I'll have a second round this weekend just trying to be hopeful. I'm rooting for you. Uh, becoming volunteer to help secure the voting system. Oh, yeah, well, good. It's good that you're becoming a volunteer because whatever the outcome, at least you'll have no regrets about you did your best. You did what you could to make sure that it was uh, a good and fair election. So, yeah. Oh, that really sucks that you have to do that and go through that, though. Uh, okay. Well, I hope that... It ends well and that you are able to uh, be stress-free soon uh, yeah we'll see but it's always so stressful that kind of thing mm, yeah well maybe it would be nice if you're able to enjoy this streaming time as a little break from your worries a little bit then that would be good. I don't know if that's possible though. <laughs> when something is bothering me, uh, I can't really think about anything else. So yeah, that really sucks. Hope it's over soon. Not just over, but over good. In a good way. Wow, I made this albatross way too big. The wings are not going to fit. <laughs> that's okay though, whatever. I'm just going to go with it. I just, I like this head so much that I drew it very big. Oh good, oh good. No static. Excellent. Yay. I'm still not sure what changed because I've had the setup like that for, for like for the whole time I've ever started streaming since last year. But could have been an update on my phone or it could have been that this is the, I'm pointing, you don't know what I'm pointing at, my microphone. <laughs> my microphone is uh, starting to break down more or something. But good, as long as it's working for now. As long as I don't have to buy another microphone. <laughs> Ooh, I do actually really like having the wings just come off and not drawing the whole wing because it's cool how the shape is just opening into the corners of the page. So actually not regretting, not really regretting cutting the wings off. Okay. That's good. 
Okay, I will... Let's see, can I save this image? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna save the reference image for this, and then I'll... I'm gonna search Seaside Mammal. See what kind of mammals look like they might go good as the back half... Oh! Um, um, I'm looking. Uh, sea lion. Sea lion. Oh. Okay, maybe not a sea lion, though, because they are assumed to be all brown. How about seal? I'm going to put a seal on the back. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes more sense for a water bird. I can't remember if... So cute. Look at this. Okay, I got, I got distracted. Look at, oh wait, it's not focusing. Look at that face. It's so cute. It's just so cute. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's all. Um, let's see, I gotta find a nice seal picture. I feel like it'll be good. I think albatrosses are the kind of bird that spend most of their life at sea. So having it be uh, with a, a, a seal would seem to be good. Um, how about seal swimming? <laughs> Chonky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're so cute. <laughs> They're very round, cute little animals. <laughs> Chunky, yep. Uh, I need one just... I'm looking for one that's coming at a similar angle to the albatross picture. Like this. Hmm. Ooh, this might be more... This might be... Oh, is it all pixely? Hmm. It says it's an HD wallpaper. That's definitely not true. Okay, hold on. Um, let me look at this. No. Okay. Mm, that would have been a perfect picture, but it's only really super pixelated and can't really see what it is. Hmm. Needs to be coming like this. Or at least close to that, so that I can see what the what it would probably look like. Oh, there's lots of bubbles on that one, so I can't really tell. Oh, maybe this one. Swim with seals. Visit Scotland. I think this will work. There's the picture that I shall use and I just need the tail part so it's like it's gonna be like a mermaid but it's a oh it won't focus come on swim with seals visit Scotland yeah I'm just gonna use the tail part okay <laughs> it's gonna go up oh my god it's gonna be so cute because <laughs> it's so small Okay, and I gotta remember to draw the the bird legs become the arms on a griffin, so I gotta remember to do that, but I'm just gonna add this tail. Oh, I can zoom in. It's gonna be nice and easy. Oh, it won't get any bigger though. Okay, download the image and open it. Are No, open the image, please. Okay, hold on, I gotta go to my downloads. There we go. There we go. It wouldn't let me zoom way in on the tail. See it, this is what I this is what I wanted to be. Super zoomed in. And it's like the it's like there's thumbs and this one is curved in, but this one is out. So like if you think of the tail like this, one of them is curved in to like guide the seal where it's going. The other one 
That was also guiding, but by being open. So I'm going to try to get that. Although it's going to have to come off the pages like the wings. And, okay, I've got to hold my pen pencil loose again. It's holding it a little too tight. And it's actually bending over so much that you can't see where this, so you can see where this, I'll just call it a thumb, I guess, even though it's on the, on the tail, but this thumb part is connected to the rest of the tail, but this thumb is connected on the other side where you can't see. Man, I don't know if this is going to come across as a griffin. <laughs> we'll see. We're doing unusual things today. So there's one, two, okay, I'm counting the number of, so one, two, three, four, five. How many points? So one, two, three, four, and five. There. There. And then these have got sort of a line coming down. I guess there's a bone, like a finger bone. <laughs> it looks like a weird flying fish bird. I guess it makes sense. Okay, back to the albatross picture. Oh, that's troublesome. You can't see the legs. They're tucked in. <laughs> There's no legs. Okay, I'll have to get another picture. Although, now that I've got it more zoomed in, I can see that I need to adjust the beak. And the eye comes like this this there and the beak needs to come farther back like this ah much better ah it's so cute it's like it has a little smile just naturally it looks like it's smiling Okay, let me look up albatross standing. Haha, <laughs> I'll be able to find out what it does with its legs. I mean with its legs. With its, uh, how does it fit those big wings? Oh. What? Awesome. What the heck? That's crazy. Xy says, I recently discovered a website, National Archives of the USA, that digitized most of the documents and made them public. If everything, like everything, it has original patent documents for telephones, the flaying machine patenting the first aircraft, old maps, old videos. That's cool. I've never heard of that before. You know, I live in the USA, but I've never heard of that. That seems like it would be really useful for cool, like, fantasy, uh... The, of course, this is the first place my mind goes, but, like, it would be cool for, like, fantasy inspiration or inclusion of, like, because, like, not, for so I was thinking of patents, not everything that's patented is made. It's not even necessarily possible to be made because it's just patented and then they make it work afterwards, but, um, yeah, that seems super cool. Man, they really are, like... They've got like, uh, wait, 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 okay, my, I looked at my search, oh, this one has a baby, it's so cute, oh. <laughs> let me go to the image search, they got like duck-like feet, do, I don't know if, okay, hold on, I'm looking at, Another little baby. So cute. Yeah, the wings just stick all the way back to the tail. Oh, here's the baby one. Walking. Oh, dang it. I gotta keep a track on the time because I'm having such fun looking at these. Look at this baby one. <laughs> See, they tuck their feet in when they're flying. So what would they do if the feet were reversed? Because the feet have to basically be reversed <clears throat> to, 
to become front legs because the back legs bend the other way and then the front legs... No, wait. No, they don't. No. No. I'm good. Yay. I'm doing my arm because if this was a... No, they do bend the other way. Because my knee bends this way. Uh, you can't see me bending my knee. <laughs> Hold on. I'm so confused. Let me think about this. Let me think about this. The knee... Okay, hold on. This is the thigh bone, the knee is here, and then the shin, the ankle, the foot, and the toes. This is on a person. Or generally any mammal. <clears throat> I see what it is. Bird, the What you see on a bird... Mm, okay, I gotta look up bird skeleton. I'll put skeleton model so I don't get some, like, horrible graphic image. I just want to see what a bird skeleton usually is put together. <laughs> like, <laughs> aha, it's doing what I thought. Ah, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, okay. Hmm. Okay. Oh, this is an excellent example of what I was wondering if that was happening. Okay, I feel like I'm not explaining myself. <laughs> my thoughts are coming half formed out of my mouth. Um, so it is the same as a person's leg, but you don't see the femur. I think that's what the up upper bone is called. The thigh bone is hidden, and what you see out, out of the feathers is actually what we would have the shin bone, and then this is the foot, and then the toes are the feet. So that's why it looks like it's going the right direction for an arm already, because you're not seeing that part. You don't see the knee. You're seeing, actually, this would be the equivalent of the ankle. Okay. I needed to figure that out in order to um, think about how to convert a back leg into a front leg because I don't have a reference image because they tuck their legs in. <laughs> so I don't know if what I'm saying makes any sense. I hope it does because I'm trying to wrap my own mind around it right now. Okay, so now I've got this albatross standing picture so I can see what the legs look like. Yeah, well, it's a good one. They just basically have duck legs. Aw. <laughs> Look at this dopey looking albatross. <laughs> Aw, oh, it's so cute. <laughs> <Boop. laughs> okay, maybe I'll use that one because it really shows the legs quite well. Little dopey, dopey albatross. Okay. <laughs> Let's just see what the legs look like. Okay, but for an arm, arms go the opposite way, so the upper bone, the upper arm bone, I'm not good with bone names, <laughs> the upper arm bone, <laughs> the lower arm bone, wrist, hand, and fingers. Okay, so, just so you can see what the heck I'm doing <laughs> down here, it's like I'm working it out. So this is a leg, like for most mammals, I guess. And then this is the arm, elbow, knee. But with the bird, for the leg, the top part and the knee is like inside the bird, I guess. And then the bottom part is what you see. And so it already looks like the right shape to be an arm. So that was bothering me. I was like, why is this so easy to use as an arm? And now I understand why. So, all right. I think that it would be having its arms like this. I don't know if this comes across right in the camera because <laughs> you can't see my elbows, but they would just be tucked up like this, I think. So that's what I'm going to do. So this is the upper arm, the elbow, and then this lower part 
bottom part of the arm, since this is a griffin and not an albatross. And then the fingers, which are webbed, but I'd think that they'd try to keep them as close together as possible in order to lessen drag, unless they want drag, like maybe put them out like this, like parachutes. I bet that geese do that. I see them land like this on the water. Geese with their webbed feet out. Ah, uh, so much trouble just to figure out how to draw these legs. We got about half an hour left of the stream, so we're good, I think. I don't know if I'll end up drawing water, though, because I ended up taking up so much space with this. Well, I guess we'll see. We'll see. Then this side, I don't think there would be too much visible. <clears throat> I think that's good. <laughs> this is a very unique, different kind of griffin. It's really hard to do them without using a quadruped land mammal and a, like a flighted bird. It has to be a flighted bird. Otherwise, it's really hard. Like if it's an ostrich, it's kind of hard because the ostrich is mostly up and down, not out like this. I guess you could have a person on the bottom. <laughs> you could have a human on the bottom. Ah, oh, one time I need to draw that. Okay, so the ostrich griffin has a human on the bottom because it stands up, stands up and down. Because that's the ostrich is like this too. <laughs> We're mammals. <laughs> so we could be the, the mammal part of the griffin. <laughs> that would be very interesting. I don't know if I'd be able to make it work, but... Okay. Okay, good. Let's start inking. Boop. Exy, have you been getting inspired from that website that you found? Like, having any ideas for... Because you're always doing fun, creative stuff. Has it sparked your imagination for anything? Oh, thank you. Exy says, looking great. Yay! My funny <laughs> albatross seal griffin. <laughs> what do I want to ink it with? The albatross, the main one that I was using, it seems to depend. But the main reference image I was using was a very light colored bird compared to some of these. They all seem to have a white body, but some have a much more yellow beak and much darker feathers on the wings. But I think I'll use this. Um, and then that way I can darken it more in areas where I want and then where it's really white, white feathers, it'll be the thinnest possible ink to help give the impression of that super white plumage. And here I'm just mostly going to ink based on my sketches and not worry about the reference images. <clears throat> I'll just trust my sketches. <laughs> Not right now, but when I first found out about it, I use it so much. I haven't posted anything that I created with the assistance of that archive, but when I'm back at creating, I'll be posting. Mmm. I feel like I want to take a look at it. I bet there's some really interesting 
there's probably just some things just sitting in there waiting to be rediscovered like oh man this is so cool why didn't nobody ever tell me about this kind of thing Okay, nice. The basic lines are done. So, let's start adding some more ink, especially on the dark parts of the feathers. Okay. So yeah, this particular one that I use as my reference image, show you what I'm seeing. It gets really dark towards the end, but then it's all speckled with white more and more as it goes toward the body. <clears throat> oh, neat. Actually says I was making fake analog documentaries about ocean monsters using some old submarine footages. Oh, that's cool. Man, they do that in big time movies too. Use some old, you see it like, oh, Footage thanks to the blah 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 archive. Uh huh. I wonder where. I wonder where that was used in the movie or whatever. Well, that's the way to do it. I mean, as long as it's not copyright anymore, I wouldn't even call it stealing. But as it says, right now I'm just stealing textures from it. They scan so good and just clean a little and use all my posters, paper overlays. Yeah, man, that's the way to do it. I mean, as long as it's not some living person's property still, then um, that's what everybody has done in art making forever, so. Plus, I think it makes it even more cool to have that little bit of story adding to the art. Like, even if you don't know the story behind that texture just from looking at it. It's in there still and then if you find out about it and you're like oh man so this is actually this and it just adds this extra layer instead of being some random random thing it's like even the texture has some meaning or its own story to tell. I think that's cool. I think it's useful too. So what else are you going to do with this old documents just sitting around? So let's make use of them. <laughs> let's see. I wish this was bigger, <laughs> actually, this pen for this, this part of the drawing, but... Oh, nice. Yeah. They categorize everything, only using unrestricted ones. Nice. Yeah! It's letting it resurrect and live again. Yes! It had a previous purpose, and now it has a completely different... It's like getting a new job in a completely different field. <laughs> okay. I'm just doing lines of various spacings to try to get this sort of speckled black and white feather look. It's not an exact replica, but it's just trying to get the same idea without necessarily going through the effort of trying to photographically mimic it. Let's see, and I think it's only going about this far, so it's pretty dark on this edge because this edge is curving down. But there is still some white feathers poking through, so even though it is in shadow, it gets light at the bottom because the feathers are just a lot brighter. Their color is brighter, not just the lighting. Uh, 
I gotta hurry it up a little bit. I've only got 20 minutes left in this whole albatross to finish. I'm gonna try to hurry a little bit, not be so precise anymore. Just fill in the wing now. But I will keep going in rows because then that helps give it the feeling of the feathers lined up in rows as they are. One wing done, well the basic part. I'll probably go over it again if I have time, but let's work on it evenly so that in case I run out of time, I'll have still uh, done a little bit on every everything. swears another fairly dark part and then it goes really dark as we get out onto this uh, curving out toward the tips of the wings. space in between the lines filling up this area because it's much lighter compared to the other spaces that I've already filled in. Okay, good. Now, um not sure if it's just because it's part of the wing or what, but there's actually a big black feathery spot here. So I'll get that in there. And then, oh, the eye is black, as far as I can see in this photo. <laughs> this is a very interesting, different griffin. Okay, and now to uh, switch back to my... Oh, what was this? This is a seal. Seal rather than a sea lion. So I'm going to do some hatching to indicate shadowed areas. I have not checked the natural light from one reference image to the other at all, but that's the kind of thing I do when I'm working on a big project that I've got unlimited time or at least a lot of time to work on a one hour project I think it's okay if I just fudge the lighting <laughs> if there is lighting then that's enough 
think, for something so quick. Okay, okay, I think that's good. Now, I'll just have to, hmm, what do I wanna do? Okay, I think the next thing I wanna do is actually take this small end of this other brush pen and make the lines a little more interesting, at least on the outside. At least on the outside of this figure. going to focus mostly on the underside so that it gives it a feeling of gravity or like shadow like the lights coming down and so the light uh, is affecting even these lines and making the lines on the bottom heavier because they're more in shadow As this comes out toward the viewer, I'm going to make the line bigger and bigger. There, I like that better. Instead of just the all one line around it. It was looking kind of boring, I think, so. Oh, we've got about 10 minutes. So what can I do in 10 minutes that'll be, that'll look even? I think maybe adding hatching. So I will go back to this fine liner and do some hatching to show shadows. So I'll show on the reference picture what I'm looking at. There's a significant amount of shadow on the bo bottom half of the body because the light is hitting it from above. So actually, now I'm thinking about it, the light source is probably quite similar between these two images I've been using because the seal was underwater, so the light is just going to be coming from above, unless it's like in a fake tank. But that's not what it looked like. It looked like it was just in the ocean. Um, so anyway, I'm going to use some hatching to try to show this pat this big patch of shadow on the bottom of the body, on the underside of the body. And then I can use curved lines, and that can also help give the body a little three-dimensional feel. Do some on this arm as well to help it feel like it is part of this. I can't really tell what the tail would be doing, so I'll just sort of follow, logically follow from here to here. Because on the albatross, the this part of the body is actually just going down and you can't really see this part.
And then for this foot, I'm just going to put straight lines across the whole thing to help show that it is separated from this foot. And I'll add some cross hatching to also be shadow. There. See, there's a little bit of shadow here on the forehead. And then this albatross, at least in this image, has seemed to have a very light colored beak, but the tip of the beak is still kind of yellowish, so. I'll do a little hatching to show not shadow, but just a color, a change of colors from white to a yellowish. <laughs> yes, I love it. Exley says, this animal has evolved on land, then turned back to the ocean, and at one point decided having wings is a good idea. Yes. <laughs> It can be on both. It can easily traverse. It can walk or swim or fly. <laughs> it is ideally adapted to any place on the planet. It's like it was like, I may as well finish, finish out the set and <laughs> get some wings in there too. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love that story for this this griffin. <laughs> I'm just looking for any final areas to add a little bit of hatching or like maybe I'll do Oh, I'll use uh, no, I'll go to the, I'll go back to the pen, to the pen. They're all pens, to the brush pen. I'm going to make this edge a little darker on this wing. Mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. And this edge a little darker. This is one of those times when being able to look at the video is helpful because I can see it in a different way than looking down on it and then look at the video and I'm like, hmm, this doesn't seem dark enough. Here it should be a more gradual transition from dark to light, so I'm going to add some lines in between the two rows that I've got going on here. Oh yeah. Definitely, yeah! Exy says, the whales and dolphins have horizontal tails and knees in their bodies, but sharks have vertical tails. They would never been on land. Yeah, that's why I always thought that for mermaids, mermaids should have, um, they should have mammal tails because it makes more sense anatomically to have a, like an orca tail or uh, a whale or something than to have, usually they have like a goldfish, kind of, like their, their tails are turned the way that makes sense for a mammal, but they have like a goldfish tail. I think it would make way more sense to make it an orca or a dolphin or something like that for that exact reason because the anatomy is much closer so it makes more sense. And to me, that makes it more believable. Okay. Doing just a little similar final fine tuning on this other wing just adding some lines to solidify darker patches and then also to make the transition 
more smooth between areas of light and dark or white feathers and black feathers. There's just a little bit of feathers. It's not like a hard line where the dark feathers start. It's like, you know, here's a little bit of white, a little bit of dark. Let's do the same thing here, make it a little more gradual the change from the wing feathers to the body feathers. And just a few minutes left, but this seal has little spots on it. It doesn't seem to have spots on this inside part of the tail, but it has spots on the outside. So I'm just gonna do a little boop, boop, just some random, some random marks to Sort of imitate the idea of these spots. Or not imitate, but indicate. Yes, that's the word I want. Indicate, not imitate. And they seem to be just dappled like random. There's not any specific pattern to them, so I'll do my best to make my marks random as well. But also make my marks turn to show the body, the way the body wraps around, because it's a cylindrical shape, not a... It's not flat on the page is flat, but I'm trying to uh, give the impression that it's not. <laughs> there, I think that's good. Maybe make some a teeny tiny ones as it goes from from seal to albatross and make it small transitional spots and have a little couple on the bottom yay well I think this is good enough it's less than a minute left perfect timing to sign off let me write my usual stuff okay I'm writing Inktober 52 I'll write it up here. I've got my little examples of a back leg and a front leg. October 52, dot, dot, skate. Oh, uh, 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 right on the bottom. I didn't give myself enough room to write skate up here without touching. <laughs> and then I think I was writing the date. Yeah. Today is the 23rd of May. No, why is it getting so late in the month already? <laughs> oh, that's fun though. It's the 23rd on the 23rd year. Love it when that happens. Okay, let's do one last, well, well I hardly gave any close-up looks I realize now, but <laughs> here's the close-up look before I sign off. So here's the albatross front half of this crazy griffin. And with a seal tail on the back. That is pretty fun. <laughs> That's a pretty fun creature, I think. Super weird. Oh, I like it. I like weird stuff like this. <laughs> oh, thank you, and you're welcome. Hexie says, looks amazing, and thank you so much for this stream. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I am always so happy to have someone to chat with. <laughs> So as you know, I am like the tiniest streamer ever, and I have like three people who join me, so <laughs> I am extremely grateful that you show up like almost every day. <laughs> so nice not to talk to myself the whole time. Okay, that's it for today. I will be back tomorrow for a normal, uh, what, what is on, is Wednesday, so uh, lucky dip, a normal timing lucky dip. I love it! Dance. <laughs> Actually put another cute little emoticon thing. I can't remember what they are. Emotes. That's what they are. <laughs> anyway. 
Okay, be back tomorrow. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.